Hi, I'm Jordan with Denison Yachting, and today we're in Miami, Florida on this beautiful 2018 80-foot Azimut motor yacht named Sinisa. What makes today's walkthrough really special for me is that this is actually the second time that I've had the pleasure to sell this yacht. What stood out to me three years ago was the fresh new look of the Azimut, and it was that point in time that they had really stepped into the future with their design. But today, I'm excited to say that the current owner has improved her greatly since the day he bought her. On today's walkthrough, I really wanna take you through and show you a number of the things that the current owner has done to really prepare Sinisa for her next owner. But before we do that, let me give you a broader overview of what makes the 80 such an appealing boat in this size range. One of the things that makes the 80 really stand out is the sheer size of her flybridge. Not only do you have two designated seating areas, but you also have a really big aft deck that can easily accommodate five or six people laying out in lounge chairs. Another key selling feature for any owner operator is the upper helm located up here on the starboard side. Later on today, when we start the interior portion of the walkthrough, I really wanna highlight this redesigned salon. This is a crucial feature that she uses to separate herself from her predecessors. What really makes the main deck stand out is the day head to port and the service galley on the starboard side. Not only does the enclosed galley allow you to keep a more formal space in the salon, but it offers you a more robust galley than you typically have and allows you to make a great meal. Towards the end of today's walkthrough, I'm gonna take you below deck and show you all the guest accommodations. Sinisa features four staterooms with five heads and has sleeping accommodations for nine. As I mentioned before, the current owner has made tons of upgrades on Sinisa. A lot of them are on the interior, which we're gonna to get to soon. But before we do, I wanna mention three major upgrades that really make her easy to handle and operate. The first of which is this yacht controller. You may already know what this yacht controller does, but just in case you don't, it's actually a wireless remote that allows you to control not only the main engines, but also the bow and stern thruster. And what would typically take four hands to control, you can do with two fingers. Where the yacht controller really comes in handy is in tight docking situations that require the captain to be moving around the vessel. In addition to the yacht controller, the second operational upgrade that I wanna to bring to your attention is that the owner literally went through all the electronics on the boat and not only upgraded the KVH satellite, the fusion head units, the satellite phone, but more importantly, he upgraded both the upper and lower helm stations with a full suite of Raymarine Axiom Electronics. The third operational upgrade I wanna to touch on today before we start our walkthrough is the shore power conversion system that allows Sinisa to plug in anywhere in the world. Now that we're back at the dock after this morning's sea trial and all tied up, we're gonna to start today's walkthrough right here on the stern. Remember that open area I showed you aft up on the flybridge? Well, the reason that's made possible is because the AB jet tender is stored right here on the swim platform. This hydraulic swim platform allows you to easily deploy and retrieve your tender with ease. Two other things I'd like to mention back here is that this is where you'll find your shore power connections as well as a hot and cold freshwater shower. Forward and center line on the transom is where you'll find the watertight door offering access to the crew cabin and engine room. As you make your way into the crew cabin, there's four things I wanna mention. The first are the cabins themselves. On the starboard side is your captain's cabin and opposite to port are your bunks for two additional crew members. These two cabins share a separate head. The second item to note is the deep freezer. The third is the separate washer and dryer. And the fourth are the AC frequency converters. Directly forward of the crew cabin is the main entrance to the engine room, which houses her twin 1550 horsepower man diesels. Other noteworthy items found here in the engine room are her twin Odan generators that are 27 kilowatts each and the side power hydraulic power pack that powers the stabilization fins as well as the bow and stern thrusters. Finally, found here in the engine room on the starboard side is the heart of the AC chiller plant, which is this 144,000 BTU Dometic unit. With a top speed of around 30 knots, her more economical cruising speed is found around 1,900 RPMs and approximately 21 knots. 
Adding to the long list of items that make this Azimut one of the most beloved yachts in her class is the way she looks when she's underway. It's not only the way she rises out of the water as she reaches top speed, or the way the sun reflects off her mirrored finished windows, but it's the overall combination of her performance and design that make her one of the most popular motor yachts ever built. After just leaving the mechanical spaces and having gone over the performance numbers, I want to get back to some of the upgrades that the current owners made on board Sinisa, starting right here on the aft deck. One of the key features back here on the aft deck is this wet bar. Not only do you have a fridge and ice maker below, you also have a freshwater sink and a Kenyan grill above. And that beep you just heard is a safety switch that kills the grill in case somebody closes the lid while it's still on. Once you pull your food off the grill, you migrate over to this beautiful alfresco dining area that has seating for about eight guests. Not only has the owner varnished all the exterior tables, he also put in a new JL stereo on the aft deck. Another feature I want to point out on Sinisa is the beautiful teak sole throughout the aft deck, as well as up the flybridge steps and all the way around the bow. There's even teak below the cleats and mooring winches outboard. One more area where you'll see this high-end finish is on top of the secondary engine room access hatch that you'll find right here in the aft deck sole. Now, wrapping up on the aft deck, follow me forward on the port side deck where we're gonna take a look at the bow area. I'd be remiss not to mention the striking window design and the cutout gunnels that reveal a once obstructed view on the previous models. This brings us to one of my favorite areas on the 80 Azimut, the bow. Until recently, it seemed like the bow and four deck configuration on the Azimuts was an afterthought. But now they feature this huge aft seating area and this clamshell canopy that opens electrically. One of the perks of shooting this walkthrough video in downtown Miami is the backdrop. So you can only imagine being a guest aboard this yacht and having this front row view of downtown Miami. Just forward of the seating area is your traditional sun pad. And thanks to the beaminess of the 80, three or four guests can comfortably lay out in the sun here. Keeping in mind that this is the ultimate family yacht, I think it's important to mention the bow rail that completely envelops the foredeck. Not only does this offer you peace of mind, but it also lends itself to her aggressive profile. The final feature to point out up here on the foredeck is the ground tackle. And one thing you'll notice is that it's recessed into the deck, eliminating trip hazards and any safety concerns. The only venue on board Sinisa that offers you a better view than the bow is found on the flybridge. That's where we're headed next. If you're a fan of azimuts, one of the things that likely converted you is the flybridge. This is something they've been crushing since day one. What makes this sprawling flybridge the benchmark in her class is her sheer capacity. We first see this on the aft end of the flybridge, and what you'll notice is that this area is very versatile and allows you a lot of different options. As you see it now, it's a dream location for setting out deck chairs or towels, but you could also set it up with a davit and carry a couple of jet skis. Immediately forward of this is where all the relaxation takes place. It starts with the sun pad on the starboard side and ties in very well to this U-shaped dinette. The thing that makes this settee the preferred dining area on the 80 Azimut is the way it's situated below the hardtop that has an electrically actuated sunroof. You can open it up like we did today when it's beautiful outside, or if the weather's being more temperamental, you can close it and still enjoy this space. You've probably already picked up on it, but there's lots of symmetry between the aft deck and the flybridge on the 80. Not only are both areas protected from the elements, but they both feature alfresco dining areas and wet bars. This wet bar, however, is more of a summer galley and features this glass bar top that was imported from Italy. Keeping in mind some of the features that we've already discussed, like the yacht controller and the family-friendly layout, all nod to the fact that this boat was designed with owner operation in mind. All of this brings us to the upper helm. It's here in one of these two swivel chairs that you take control of the yacht. And while I've already gone over a lot of the upgraded features like this new Raymarine Axiom electronics package, one of the things I love about the upper helm is the way it's conjoined with this observation settee. 
Seated here on the port side, three or four guests can keep the captain company and take in the view as they cruise from Miami to the Bahamas and back. Taking one more look at the hardtop, it's worth mentioning the KVH satellite system that was added by the current owner, as well as the new Raymarine radar. Complementing this just forward on the hardtop is the FLIR night vision camera that was recently added. Wrapping up all the exterior deck spaces, we're now gonna change gears and take a look at the interior. Stepping into the salon, we're gonna begin the interior portion of our walkthrough today. And while I wanna point out all the upgrades, I don't wanna overlook the absolutely stunning layout and features that come standard on the 80 Azimut. In terms of a few things that I think Azimut did really well, we're gonna start with these floor to ceiling windows and the cutouts in the gunnel that give you an uninhibited view of your surroundings. The second thing the shipyard did really well in the salon is found when you look up at the overhead. They eliminated the old fabric headliners and carried the millwork from the sides all the way overhead and integrated LED lighting throughout. The salon is divided into two distinct sections. Aft is the living area that has the pop-up TV and all the AV equipment. And just forward is a formal dining area as well as bottle storage forward. When I listed this boat three years ago, one of the drawbacks of her was that she had white carpet starting at the salon, going all the way through the guest accommodations. One of the things the current owner has done to the tune of about $60,000 was ripped out all the old carpeting and put this brand new hardwood flooring throughout. Perhaps the area on board that benefited most from the new hardwood flooring and the removal of the carpet is this formal dining space that makes up the second distinct area in the main salon. Before we move on from the salon, I wanna to touch on a few more of the upgrades that the current owners made. I already mentioned the fusion head units that were replaced, but he's also put electric blinds in the salon, a satellite phone, and a ghost security system featuring three onboard cameras. Just forward of the salon on the starboard side is the entrance into the galley. And some of the main appliances you'll find in here is her four burner cooktop just above the microwave convection oven and just inboard of the full size Miele dishwasher. Facing aft, we see a stainless basin sink, a full size French door refrigerator freezer, and plenty of custom dishware storage for all the Azimut branded glassware. Just across the galley to port is the day head. Leaving here and heading forward leads us to our interior helm that is found just off to the starboard side. I wanna take just a minute and walk you through some of the electronics found here on the lower helm. First, you have your Raymarine chart plotters that were recently replaced. Here in the center is your tri-data display. And just below are your LCD screens for your man engines. Perhaps one of the most important features on this lower helm is the Naviop screen. This allows you to control all the different aspects, including the electricity, tankage, navigation, air conditioning, and all the different systems on board. Directly below the Naviop screen is the searchlight control, your windlass controller, your hydraulic thrusters, trim tap control, autopilot control, your main engine controls, and your Abetix joystick. Wrapping up the lower helm, we're gonna take the centerline stairway down to the guest accommodations where we'll end today's walkthrough. The first of four accommodations we're gonna take a look at is here in the master stateroom. And honestly, this feels like more of a luxury hotel than a cabin on a boat. And one of the things that makes it super special are these waterline windows. Located directly in front of these windows on the starboard side is this love seat and opposite the port is a seating area for two. The master features a forward-facing centerline berth with the entertainment center found at the foot of the bed. Another perk of the master stateroom is the amount of storage you'll find in here. We see it in nearly every unused corner of the stateroom. The ensuite is located aft of the master stateroom and features a his and hers layout. Starting on the starboard side, we see a tub and vanity right next to a walkthrough shower that leads to another vanity and separate bathroom stall. As we leave the master and make our way forward in the lower companionway, our first stop is the twin stateroom with an additional Pullman berth and ensuite.
Directly across from here is our third cabin with a double berth, and given its size, could definitely be considered a second VIP stateroom. Wrapping up today's walkthrough and heading all the way forward in the lower companionway, we arrive finally at the VIP stateroom that features a queen berth and an ensuite. On behalf of the Denison Yachting Team and myself, Jordan Pruz, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on board Sinisa. She's a 2018 80 Azimut Flybridge. If you have any questions or would like to see her in person, please contact me anytime. <laughs>